Aztecs Part 2 The Market Minigame in Forge of Empires. One of this small video series on the Aztecs has shown the development until the opening of the market in the nearby courtyard. Today it is about explaining this market and giving tips for the minigame to be found there. The market is a very important additional source of cultural goods for the Aztecs. In the market there are daily three minigames which one should always make in any case. There is no better way to get the goods of the Aztecs. From the game mechanics, the minigame reminds of Microsoft's Minesweeper. But there you have to avoid mines. Here it is all about finding the goods. After a first click into the game field, a tile is revealed. If this tile has no neighbors with the offered good, the neighboring tiles will be uncovered as well. Neighboring tiles without neighbors with the offered good are also uncovered, etc. With a little luck, a single click will uncover a huge area of the game field. Now you can see tiles with numbers. Each number tells you how many tiles with cultural goods are adjacent to the respective tile. For example, the 2 in the upper left corner means that two neighboring tiles must have a cultural good. Since the tile only has two neighbors, the decision is very simple. In the upper right corner we find again exactly the same constellation. Again, we can collect two pieces of vegetables. Such a corner situation with ones is also clear. That brings us the fifth vegetable. Also, the bottom right corner is clear and we can collect the two vegetables there without any risk. The last and ambiguous tile is then at the bottom left. The top three one tiles already have a neighbor. So the lower three tiles share a single neighbor who can only be in front of the middle one tile. Now there are two attempts left but we have no idea where the last vegetables might be. Some tiles we can exclude for sure. This leaves five possible tiles where the two remaining vegetables are hidden. This is now pure gambling. The next click can be a hit, but it can also go wrong. There is no safe solution at this point, no matter how long one would think about it now. Purely out of gut feeling, I take the tile on the right. Arrive it. By the way, this was a bad decision because a click on one of the four tiles on the left would have given me at least some information about the last tile. Such mistakes can happen. This is not dramatic. It costs a vegetable in the end. Maybe it is broccoli, then it is not that bad. Then I click on one of the four tiles on the left. Also arrive it. So I get only 8 of the 10 possible vegetables this time, unfortunately. With diamonds I could now double the yield. But that does not have to be. I could also buy another turn with which I could surely find another vegetable now, because due to the knowledge gained so far, two fields at the bottom left, above and below that two, must contain a vegetable. But even this safe turn is not worth 10 diamonds to me. It also works completely without diamonds. Let's just have a look at another pass. This time the first move unfortunately doesn't reveal a large area and only gives away one safe position and a 50% chance for a second vegetable. Now the question is whether it is better to start with a corner tile 
as done here, or whether a field in the middle offers the better chance to uncover a large area. According to Professor Niemeyer, who has worked out the mathematical background to the game Minesweeper, the chance of uncovering a large continuous area is somewhat greater in the middle than at the edge or even in the corner. Therefore, I can only recommend, unlike in my example, to make the first click in the center. Even if my third click happens to hit a vegetable, it unfortunately doesn't provide any information about the neighboring tiles and doesn't really help me. Only my fourth click uncovers a large area, which then makes some vegetables easy to find. These four safe positions can now be collected easily. I would like to briefly explain the fourth position. The upper blue one says that this field has only one neighbor with vegetables. This is a field diagonally above. So the other four neighbors cannot contain vegetables. The one below then has only one single neighbor which must contain the vegetables. The exclusion of tiles leads to success in many such cases. With this knowledge, we also can determine the second neighbor for the tile with the red 2. The one above already has its neighbor, so that we can safely exclude its adjacent tile. Now, we are simply at a point where, again, only luck helps. Again, the recommendation is to click in the middle of the still hidden tiles if possible, as this improves the chances slightly. But I read this realization later, so that I didn't click in the middle of the hidden area. I am learning as well. However, I accidentally meet a vegetable. Unfortunately, this does not give me any information about the neighboring tiles. Once again, I have to trust in my luck. A tile with eight neighbors and one of them has a vegetable. A very bad chance. Let's see if another tile gives me more insight. The two now uncovered makes it seem very likely that one of the five missing vegetables will be on one of the two tiles between the one and the two. So I use my last click for one of these. So this time I only found eight of the possible 12 vegetables. This is a very common result. You can't end this game with 100% for sure. Here luck plays a certain role. But you can help the luck with a little bit of brains. It is interesting to recognize certain standard situations. We already had the simple standard situation, corners. Both this corner with the twos and the ones corners are absolutely clear hits. There you can pick up the goods without any risk. Beside the corners, there are other standard situations that are often encountered. With the combination 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 1, you can immediately click blindly on the respective fields without thinking. I hope that these little tricks have helped you to get the most out of this little minigame. Have fun with it!